Welcome to the pre-op total joint orientation program for Inova Mount Vernon Hospital. I'm Bob Fontana, a physician assistant with the Inova Joint Replacement Center. The goal of this video is to teach you how to prepare at home for your surgery. Then we'll talk about what you can expect on the day of surgery, when you're in the hospital, and when you get home. This is an exciting time for total joint replacement because the theories, technologies, procedures, and medications have come together to allow patients to leave the hospital after just one or two nights. In some cases, our patients are even able to go home the same day. At-home recovery is really the best, and it's possible now because of fewer restrictions and precautions after surgery. Plus, we now have medications that allow for excellent pain and nausea control. So let's begin. By now, you've seen your surgeon, and you have both agreed that you are a candidate for total joint replacement. The surgeon's office will book your surgery and share with the hospital any medical information or requirements that he or she will need for your individual case. The next big step will be your pre-op day here at the hospital. This is usually scheduled one to two weeks before surgery. During this visit, we'll schedule three to four appointments on the same day. If possible, it would be good to have your coach, family, or friend join you for the visit to hear all the instructions and requirements for when you return home. The first appointment is usually with the surgical liaison nurse. The nurse will gather all information we need to proceed with surgery safely. This would include your medical history, including all prescriptions and over-the-counter medications that you currently take. The nurse will also tell you what time to stop eating and drinking on the day of surgery as well as what medications you will need to take the day of surgery. This is very important information. You will also meet with the physical therapist who will give you simple exercises to prepare for surgery and post-op therapy. They will also talk about your home environment, what your surgeon's usual post-op routine is, and what equipment needs you may have. The nurse case manager will discuss your hospital discharge, also help with any special needs that you may have, such as additional help at home. If your surgeon would like a medical doctor to be part of your care team while you are at the hospital and your physician does not practice at our hospital, you will meet and be examined by a physician on staff. This doctor will just be your caregiver while you are here at the hospital. It's very important that you follow the instructions the nurse gave you during your pre-op visit about what time you should stop eating and drinking the night before surgery. You should still take your required medications with a sip of water. Be sure that you've packed your overnight bag to include loose, comfortable clothing and minimize the amount of valuable items. It would be a good idea to have a family member or friend watch over any electronic devices that you may want to bring. Only one person may stay with you in the holding area before surgery. You need to come to the hospital two hours before your scheduled surgery. You want to come to the yellow entrance and check in at the sign-in desk. Your job is now done. It is now our job to take great care of you. Try not to let the stress of the day get to you. Your holding room nurse will bring you to the pre-op area where you will have a name band placed on your arm, your blood will be drawn, and an IV will be started. You'll change into your patient gown and get up on your stretcher. Most of you will have a TED stocking placed on your non-operative leg. You'll mark your leg, yes, the side to be operated on. When your surgeon meets with you, he or she will initial where you wrote, yes. This is an important safety check. Then your anesthesia team will discuss with you your choices of anesthesia. You have three choices of anesthesia. General, which is going to sleep. Regional, we are numb from the waist down with sedation on board, so you will also sleep. Or choose not to choose. In that case, the surgeon and the anesthesia team will make the best choice for you. The next section of this video will provide you with a brief overview of what to expect after surgery and during your hospital stay. Our 
philosophy is that you are not sick, but that you had a bad joint that your surgeon has now fixed. You will see this philosophy throughout your stay on 4A, the dedicated medical unit, as we won't be doing things for you as much as setting them up to allow you to do them for yourself. There are two main goals for your stay with us. First is that you feel the entire program from the scheduling through the follow-up appointment with the surgeon was excellent. Second is that you truly feel safe and ready to go home at discharge. Our average length of stay is just under two days. Rest assured that you won't be discharged until you are ready. You must receive two clearances before you leave. The first is from your surgeon, and this may happen in one night, and that is that you are medically ready for discharge. The second clearance is from your physical therapist, and with this, you have demonstrated to the therapist that you have met the goals and can do the basic functional activities with no more than minimal assistance. So how do we accomplish these goals so quickly? It is a short, intense rehab process that consists of a team of nurses, techs, case managers, and physical therapists, and led by you. We will be looking to you and to your coach to tell us what you need so we can tailor the program to your individual needs. When you arrive to the fourth floor, your nurse will orient you to your room and your call bell. Remember, we want you to promote your independence, but while you are here in the hospital, if you would like to get up or need to go to the bathroom, please always call. It is our job to keep you safe, making sure you are steady on your feet and have clear pathways before you start moving. Your nurse will also instruct you on some basic exercises, including deep breathing, using your incentive spirometer, and exercises for your circulation. You will be offered a clear liquid tray. Some of you may have an appetite, others may not. If you do have an appetite, we suggest starting with the clear tray to make sure it sits well on your stomach. A dinner tray will be brought to you that evening. And during your stay in the hospital, someone from dietary will be coming to your room, allowing you to place your order for your meals. Generally, if your surgery is before noon, you will have physical therapy start the same afternoon evening as your surgery. If you do have therapy, this initial evaluation will begin with some gentle exercises, education on precautions, and assistance with sitting on the side of the bed with progressing to standing and ambulation as able. Don't be discouraged if therapy does not start until the next morning. By that time, everyone is far enough removed from anesthesia and is feeling better, has full control of their legs, and is ready for walking and other functional activities. Also, if therapy does not begin the same day, your nurse and techs will sit you on the side of the bed in the evening so that everyone has the opportunity to get their sense of vertical on the same day as their surgery. After all is done for the evening, most of you are ready to retire for the night. Remember, you had a busy day. You probably didn't sleep well the night before, and now you will need a good night's rest for the therapies tomorrow. There are no strict visiting hours on our floor, but if your visitors are leaving after 9 p.m., they will have to exit through the emergency room exit. Be assured that our night staff is fantastic and you are in excellent hands. There are a few private rooms where a family or friend can stay the night with you. These rooms are an additional cost and are available on a first come, first serve basis. So please call ahead if you would like to have your name placed on the private room list. During the night, the staff will wake you twice. The first is for pain assessment and to offer medication. We used to not wake you, but learned people were sleeping right through and then waking up because of increased pain. We found with waking for pain assessment, we are able to manage your pain and to keep it at a three or less. The second time is around 5 a.m. for lab draws. This is so your surgeon will have results from your blood work before they visit you in the morning. Once morning comes, you will be offered a bath in a bag and basin of water to allow you to perform your morning care. 
Again, we will encourage you to do as much as you can, but are here to assist as needed. You will then get dressed as able and have breakfast. After breakfast, therapy begins. For most, you will have a morning therapy session and an afternoon therapy session. Each time, the therapist will find you in your room and from there, we'll progress with exercises, walking and bathing, and dressing activities. If you are having hip surgery, you may need some equipment to allow you to independently dress while maintaining your hip precautions. These may include a reacher, sock aid, and long-handled shoehorn. For instruction on dressing your lower body, it is preferred that all patients have loose, comfortable clothing to practice with the therapist. There is a gym on the fourth floor with large mat tables for doing exercising and practicing transfers, a half staircase for stair training, a toilet and tub all for practicing bathroom transfers. For walking, everyone starts with a walker. This doesn't mean that is what you'll go home with, but it does offer the best for balance and stability. Some people may be able to use crutches or even a cane when they leave the hospital. No matter the device, we want you to go home with the one that is the safest for you, that you are confident with, and will use at home. Remember, we aren't sending you home to just lie in bed. We want you up and moving and gradually getting back to your regular routine. Some of you may need equipment for your toilet. There's a three-in-one or bedside commode that can be used over the toilet to give you some height as well as arms to use for leverage. Another option to give you some height for a toilet is a toilet riser. Also at home, you may find it safer to initially sit for your shower. Walk-in showers have a few options for a seat, including a three-in-one commode or even a plastic lawn chair. For a tub shower, there are tub benches. You may find it helpful to install a handheld shower hose for your tub shower as it is beneficial in allowing you to direct the water while showering. It may also be a good idea to practice a sit-down shower before surgery. After your morning therapy session, you will sit up in a wheelchair on the unit so we can closely monitor you. This is to build your upright tolerance and endurance, which will enable you to meet your mobility goals as expected. We also encourage you to sit up for as many meals as possible. Since you may not be using any equipment for a long time, you may want to ask a friend or family member to borrow their equipment. If you do borrow equipment, especially a walking device, the therapist would appreciate it if you could have it brought to the hospital before you were discharged so that he or she can assess it, making sure that it is sized appropriately for you and all the padding and tips are in good condition. The hospital does have a consignment closet that we do not benefit from financially. We can provide you with canes, crutches, and or walkers. Typically, insurances will cover one piece of walking equipment. From the closet, you can also obtain a three-in-one commode, which some insurances covers, others do not, and a toilet risers, which are an out-of-pocket cost. Equipment in the hip kit, the reacher, sock aid, and long-handled shoehorn are also an out-of-pocket cost. Our consignment closet does not have tub benches, but in the therapy gym, there are examples of them. Equipment that is not covered by insurance or is not available in the consignment closet may also be available at other vendors such as Walgreens, Rite Aid, Bed Bath & Beyond, or your local home medical equipment store. When you're leaving the hospital, someone from staff will go with you out to the car to help you get in the car. You would have been instructed on the car transfer technique prior to your discharge with the therapist. Typically, the bigger, the boxier the car, the easier it is to get in and out of. Remember that if it was difficult to get in and out of before surgery, it may still be difficult just a few days after surgery. Once home, you are encouraged to perform your exercises, walk and rest as needed. For many of you, you may even need a nap once or twice a day. 
With each passing day, the goal is to do a little bit more activity and a little less resting so that eventually you are back to your normal routine. Those of you with a partial knee replacement will typically be going straight to outpatient therapy. Those of you with a full knee replacement will initially be set up for home care, PT, and nursing for two weeks. The goal for patients with a full knee replacement is also to get to an outpatient facility sooner than later. It is in an outpatient facility where you can really progress with strengthening and range of motion exercises for your new knee. Those of you who have had a total hip surgery will also be set up initially for home care, PT, and nursing for two weeks. One difference with patients who have had hip surgery is that you will not be going to outpatient therapy right away. That will be a decision you and your doctor will discuss at your follow-up appointment. Patients with their new hip will continue only with the home exercise program given from the hospital. The new hip will need time to heal before introducing additional stresses to it. Everyone will follow up with their surgeon in about four weeks. You will have an appointment card mailed to your home. At this follow-up visit, you want to have a detailed list of questions related to what you specifically would like to return to doing. Remember, everyone's goal and reason for having this surgery is different. You want to find out when you can return to the activities that are most important to you. Thank you for your time and attention. We look forward to meeting you at pre-op visit and on the joint replacement unit after your surgery.